a key skill that separates entry level from mid or senior level developers, in my experience, is knowing how to handle errors properly. It not only increases the quality of your code, but it also makes you look way more professional in your portfolio, for example, if employers take a look at your code, but also it definitely increases the user experience. If they know what's going on, they get a little cool button they can click to try again, right? That's just super user friendly and overall just massively increases the quality of your web app. Okay, let's learn how we can handle errors in Next.js 13 like a pro. And Next.js makes it super easy, actually. It's very enjoyable. If you know React, you know there is something called a, um, an error boundary, right? If something fails to render during suspense, which may or may not happen, then the error boundary is called to display a user-friendly message as what just happened, right? And let's say this page is an auth-only page. Nobody that is not logged in is able to access this page. But let's say the const session is equal to null. So we are mocking the case that the user is not authenticated. In that case, an error should be thrown. So if not session, then we are gonna throw a new error. And we can say, for example, auth is required to access this resource which is a very user-friendly message, right? It's very clear. And now when we go to this page, what should happen is that this error gets thrown because there is no session that we're mocking. So if we go into the browser and navigate to this page, we can see auth is required to access this resource. Great. Well, what's not great is that our application currently crashes, right? Because this is an unhandled runtime error. That's pretty bad. But the good thing is that we know the error works correctly. And now we can actually handle that error like a pro. And the way we can do that in Next.js 13 in the experimental app directory is by creating a new file called error.tsx or .jsx, um, whatever you prefer. This is not TypeScript specific at all. And this is gonna create an automatic React error boundary, meaning if something fails to load in suspense, right? There's an error boundary to catch that. And that's what this page right here is. I'm gonna create this as a functional component, but as I said, no TypeScript needed. You could leave all this away if you wanted to and just save that. And by default, um, these error components, because we're passing them a function Implicitly, Next.js does it for us. They need to be turned into a client component as though otherwise this would not work. And now let's see what happens. So we are navigated to the error page and we can see the error right here, which is fine. But this means the error is now handled, right? We are navigating the user to another page that is about to handle the error. And that is way more user-friendly. And this page gets two properties from Next.js. One being the actual error, and the second property being the reset. It's a function, that's what I was talking about earlier, that's why this is a client component, a function we can call to redo the last action and see if that fixes the error. Super cool that we get access to that. Now, if you're in TypeScript, you might get an error because the types of these two are not defined. Error in that case would be of class or of type error, which is a class. And then the reset would be a function that returns void, but just if you're in TypeScript. If you're in JavaScript, don't worry about that. And now, for example, we could render out a button saying, try again. And on click of this button, we want the reset function to be called. Let's save that, go back into our browser. We get the button right here. And if we try again, you can see the error pop up again, which is great, right? I mean, in this case, it doesn't make any sense because we know the error is about to happen, but if something just went wrong because an API that you rely on in your app had a short outage, this try again would work properly, right? Just as you expected, which is a super good measure to make error handling user-friendly. And then to make this even more user-friendly, I've prepared just a little example right here that we can copy and paste. This is not about the styling at all, so I'm just gonna paste this in. It has a bunch of Tailwind classes prepared for us, but I just want to, um, you to understand the gist of it, right? I'm gonna save it. And uh, as I said, this is just for the styling. It doesn't make sense to get into that. Um, essentially, if I save that, as you can see right here, in the H1, we are displaying the error.message. And if we take a look at what we get access to on this error, we get a stack, a name, a message, and a cause. And I'm about to show you a way 
that is super convenient to make this even better. Okay, this looks pretty bad because my browser is by default in dark mode and this is in light mode. So let's give this a background of gray 900, for example. And I think that should now work. Yeah, okay, that looks better. Um, so we are displaying that the auth is required to access this resource, right? So the message that you can see right here is what we called in this error. And one way we can abstract that I think is super convenient. Um, we don't have to type this every time. Instead, we can create one exception that we can always throw when there is an error problem, an auth problem, for example. Meaning we could, instead of this, do something like throw new auth required error and that's it. Now this doesn't exist yet, but we can create that. So every time auth is required, you could just throw that error and be totally good to go. Now let's create that. Um, I'm going to do that in a file called lib and then under lib, let's create a folder called exceptions. And in this, or actually we can just create that as a file. We don't need that as a separate folder. Let's make a file called exceptions.ts. And inside of this exceptions, we can create our custom auth required error. The way we do that is by exporting a class with the name of that we just specified, the auth required error. And we don't even need to type this out ourselves. We can just say extends error, meaning we are copying all the properties from the regular error and putting them into our auth required error. Then let's put a constructor in here and that constructor takes the error message. And we are going to default that to something like auth is required required to access this page period, right? And then a super in here that we pass the message and also this dot name. This refers to wherever this is rendered, like this particular instance of the class that we are invoking. For example, in this, um, in this example, it would be, you know, this, it's kind of a weird keyword, kind of weird to explain. Uh, I hope you got the hang of it. And then we can call this, for example, requires auth, or let's, let's call this the same thing as we called it up here, auth required error. There we go. We can save that. And that is all we need to do, right? Now we have created a custom exception. We can throw every time we want to handle this error and we can import it. Now let's just invoke that. And as you can see, the message is optional because we defaulted it to something. We could still change it if we wanted to, but we don't have to. We can just throw this error like that, go back to our page. And if we try to render this page again, we can see auth is required to access this page. And we can throw that in every, in every page that we want to be auth only, right? Let's create another one, call this something like dashboard and dashboard gets a page.tsx. Uh, so the route for this would be um, localhost 3000 or whatever port you're hosting on slash dashboard because the that's the routing structure in Next.js 13. It's a file-based routing structure where we create a page.tsx inside of the folders and only the folders are actually going into the URL name. I'm going to initialize this as another component and also throw a new auth required error in here, making this an auth page. Now, just, just throwing an error wouldn't make any sense. You would obviously do this conditionally based on whether there is a session, for example. And now if we try to navigate to the slash dashboard, hit enter, auth is required to access this page and we cannot access it. So in a very user-friendly and convenient fashion, we have created a Next.js custom error boundary that we can then use to handle every exception that occurs somewhere in our component. We can display it to the user, even provide them with a try again option, which is super good um, if you threw the error conditionally based on you know, something that might have an outage currently, but that's about to be fixed um, after some time. And we are also offering them the option to navigate back to the homepage. That's all I wanted to share. I really hope you enjoyed this approach of handling errors. I really liked it. I think this is super convenient and you can do a lot of stuff with it. If you build something cool, let me know. That's all I want to share for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.